In this video, we're going to take a look at how to make some useful patterns and shapes in HLSL and Unreal Engine 5.3. So we can make patterns like this flower, but also animate it as well. Or we'll also take a look at how you can make something like this more complex fractal or Mandelbrot pattern. To begin, we'll create a custom node and we're going to have two inputs. We're going to have an input for UV and we're also going to have an input for time. So connected to the UV input, we're going to create our texture coordinate node and connect that up. And to our time connection here, we'll just create a time node. Now we're not going to use the time node just yet, but once we want to add animation, it will become useful. So in this custom node, we're going to start creating a flower like pattern. Right now we have no code in here, but let's take a look at how we'll be able to create a flower pattern with adjustable amount of petals, thickness, size, and then also how steep or how far in those petals go as well. To begin writing this code, I'm just going to go into Visual Studio Code so that we could see the syntax or the code a little bit easier. Now, what I'm going to start off with is defining the UVs. We have the UVs connected to our custom node, so we're going to take those UVs and modify them. We're going to take those UVs and times it by two and then minus one. And what that's going to do is kind of center out the UV. If I just went back here, and just took a quick look at that. If we took this UV coordinate and we went here and multiplied it by two and then subtracted one, if we preview that, you'll see that the zero, so zero on red, zero on green would be right here, is right in the center. And then this would be negative one and negative one and then positive one and positive one. So by multiplying it by two and minusing one, we are able to shift the center point to the middle. Whereas if I just viewed the texture coordinate node, it's normally at the corner. So that's kind of the first thing that we're going to do and why I kind of take these UVs and do that to be able to make the center point in the very center of that UV space. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is define a variable to store our result. So I'm going to make a variable called result, and I'll just make it uh, a, just black color for now, storing really just nothing. And then what we're going to do is create another variable called distance. So float dist for distance and put length UV. And what that's going to do is kind of calculate the distance from the current UV point uh, from the center of the UV. Next, we're going to define a bunch of variables for our petal attributes. So I'll do something like float size for the size of the flower or the, the pattern that we're making. Maybe I'll also do float petals. How many petals do we want on this flower pattern? Maybe six, maybe thickness of those petals. So we'll do something like 0 0.3. And then also the inset, how far those petals go in before it reaches the center. So I'll do something like float inset and make that 0 0.5. Now that we have our attributes or kind of our variables to control this pattern, we actually have to draw that flower pattern. So the way that we're going to do this is use the if statement. And we're going to check if the distance is less or equal to the thickness multiplied by the size plus the inset multiplied by sine. And then our petals multiplied by a tan to uv y, uv x. And then make sure all our brackets are closed. And if we do something like that, Oops, there we go. If we do something like that, what we'll do is we'll make our result equal float three and just make it one for red, maybe one for uh, green and one for blue, if that statement is true. And then we'll return our result. And if we take this code, 
and throw it into Unreal in our custom node, we get our petal and flower pattern. So we've got our little flower with these, these petals that are adjustable. We can have eight petals or 24 petals or even just something like six, doesn't matter. We have thickness control, so we can make it larger or smaller on those petals. We have the overall size as well, the larger or smaller, and then inset amount. So very small inset or a very steep inset, or maybe even just going right to the very center. And the very cool thing about this is we can start to use that time to control these. So maybe for the inset, instead of using just a single value, I'll use sine time. And that will take the time. And since it's within a sine function, it will go from negative one to positive one, back down to negative one, and back up to positive one. So it'll go up and down and kind of vary and give us an animated pattern. So very easy and a very short amount of code but also very powerful. So what about something a little bit more complex? I want to go back to Visual Studio Code and we're going to make something a little bit more complex. You may have seen these fractal patterns or Mandelbrot patterns where they're kind of patterns with infinite detail that scales forever. And it's quite an interesting thing that you're able to do with a very small amount of code. So we're going to take that, we're going to take the formula for generating a Mandelbrot pattern and utilize it within our material to create very complex shapes. And even though the result seems very complex, the code is really not that bad. And the way that we can start off with this is first determine a number of calculations or iterations. So I'm going to do a constant int and just call it iter for iterations and do 64 iterations and we're going to define a position. So I'm going to pretty much replicate the Mandelbrot formula but through HLSL. So I'm going to start with float to and call it C and make it equal our UV times maybe three minus float two and this is our position of where this will be mapped. So if I change these values like the two and the 1.5, it's just going to offset the pattern. So that's totally adjustable. It's not like it has to be these values. Nothing really has to be the values that I'm typing in. It's just simply a starting point and then you can modify it to get different results. The next thing we have to do is define the starting position uh, of our pattern. So I'm just going to do something like float two z equals c is going to equal this position here, uv times three minus uh, float two, which will minus uh, two in x, 1.5 in y. So just offsetting the pattern. And to draw this Mandelbrot, Mandelbrot pattern, we have to do a for loop. So I'm going to do four and I'll do int i equals zero. i is less than our number of iterations, i plus plus. And then inside our for loop, we'll do the Mandelbrot formula here. So I'll do z equals float to zx. So I could do z dot x because z is a float to, and that's equaling our UVs. Our UVs store u and v, two things, like x and y. And then we minus two values here as well. So it's really two values packed together. So z dot x times z dot x minus z dot y times z dot y. And then that will be our first kind of part of this float too. Again, two things, two values packed together. That's the first value. And then just make this easy to read. I'll go down here for the second value. And the second value will be two times z dot x times z dot y and then what we'll end up doing after all of this 
I'm just gonna space this out. Actually, you know what? We can make it one line. Might be easier to read. It's a little bit hard to read, but we do this and then we'll plus C. And that is pretty much it. So it's not a big formula. And what that's gonna do is allow us to generate all these very detailed patterns based on its kind of current position or iteration. And then we're gonna check if the distance from the center exceeds a certain value. If so, it's gonna break out of the, the for loop to save a bit of time. So we'll do if length z is bigger than two, then we're just going to break loop and exit it. And then finally, to get this to output something that we can see, we're gonna do float Mandelbrot. I'm just gonna make a variable here and make it float i divided by float iter. And just make them float so they're all matching. Might not be necessary, but just to avoid any problems. And then we're gonna return the result. So return Mandelbrot. So not that much code, 19 lines of code. And if I copy this, throw it into here, what do we get? We get our Mandelbrot pattern with this very detailed fractal. And one thing that we can do with this now is if we want to make it look a little bit more interesting, again, we could start using time to adjust the formula or to adjust the calculations we're doing in here to add movement or add variation. So maybe what I'll do is instead of just having it plus C, we could do something like plus sine C plus time. So that value will be changing constantly. And if we do something like that and put that in here, well, then we start to get this really cool animation. So it's very easy to start to add movement and varying values by just using time and sign. So let's take a look at one more thing that we can create. So if, I'm just going to go back to Visual Studio Code here and we're going to go over a little bit of code that can actually generate quite a few different patterns and you can probably change around the values and start modifying it, changing around a bit more, and finding other interesting patterns and things that you can create. But this is going to be a very simple and a very useful one. I'm just going to create a float value called f. This will be our frequency, and maybe I'll make it 10. And then we'll do another float, and I'll call this a for amplitude, and make it something like 0 0.1. So we have our frequency and amplitude. And then I'll make another variable called result, just to store our result. And we're going to do frac, so fractional values it's going to extract of sine uvx, so again using our uvs, times our frequency, plus, and then we're going to do sine uvy times our frequency. And then we're going to multiply by our amplitude, and then just return this. So return result. And that's it, a few lines of code. And if we take that and we place it in here, we get a somewhat complex pattern and it's adjustable so I could make it smaller or larger. And right now we're just doing frac sine uvx times frequency plus sine uvy times frequency uh, multiplied by our amplitude. And if we change that frac to something like abs or absolute value, then we get kind of like a chain link fence pattern or like this block pattern. Or if we were to change it to something like floor, we're going to get a bunch of kind of center shapes or circular like shapes. Or if we change it to seal, it'll round it up 
and we'll get another kind of pattern, almost like a checkerboard pattern, but then with circles in the center of some of those checkers. So very few lines of code, but a lot of interesting patterns you can get out of it. So let's take a look at one more interesting pattern. So again, I'm going to go back into Visual Studio Code. I'm just going to delete this. And we're going to start off with something very similar to kind of what we've already done. We're going to take our UVs, but this time we're going to take the fractional values of UV times 10. It's almost like uh, tiling the UV. And we're going to define a circle radius. So I'm going to do something like float circle radius and make that maybe 0 0.3. And this is something a little bit interesting. I'm going to make a Boolean. So a Boolean is a variable that can only be true or false. Only has two states, true or false. And I could do something like call this Boolean pattern and do an int and then floor and then length of our UV minus 0 0.5 divided by our circle radius. And then we'll do modulus 2. So modulus 2 will check if it's an even or an odd number. But what we can do in our Boolean here, since our variable is a Boolean, we can actually do a double equals, almost like a condition, where we'll, we'll check what the result of this is. And if that result equals zero, then this Boolean will return as true. Otherwise, it will return as false. So we can do that to check if it equals a specific value. And if it does, it'll be true. If not, it'll equal false. And by doing that, it just kind of makes things a little bit easier to control. And we can just return our pattern. And instead of doing like a big if statement, I can also simplify that and say return pattern. And if it's true, it returns maybe red. And if it's false, it returns green. And it actually should be two dots there. So if pattern is true, it outputs red. Else, it outputs green. And in a very few lines of code, we go back into Unreal, paste that in here. Oh, let's see, we got some errors. Oh, silly me. I didn't do float three. We have three values here. It's a color. There we go. Throw that back in here. And we get these patterns, these concentric circles. So there's circles with another circle around it. And we can change that circle radius to be smaller. Or larger. So again, very useful pattern. And again, if we want to add time, maybe you control the circle radius with sign time. And now what we end up with is these animated kind of circles. If you found this video useful, if you learned something new, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you're part of the Patreon, which you can find a link to down in the description below, you'll also get the PDF for this video, which will contain the code and the examples that we went through today in this video. And also in addition to that, there will be a total of 25 different patterns and shapes and their code on how to create them with HLSL. So check that out if you're interested. And let me know in the comments below what interesting patterns you were able to create 